In this lesson, we'll do a task which is continuation of the previous task one and two, where we created a class point. In this task, we'll add more functionality in that class. At first step, instead of mag for the magnitude of the point, set magnitude as absolute value of the point using the under absolute method. Then define negative operator for the point so that negative of point will return a new point with both coordinates as negative of the original point. In part C, you must define plus and minus operators between two point objects and there must be support for in place operation for both operators. Then you need to add support for multiplication operator and that could multiply a point with a number that will return a new point with scaled x and y coordinates and also be able to multiply two points, in which case it should return the dot product of the two points. You should use is instance to check the type of the other operand, whether that is a number or a point, and should apply the calculations accordingly. Then in part E, add the support for Dwayne operator between a point and a number. The result will be a point with divided x and y coordinates. Then add support for all rich comparisons between two points, the comparison will be based on the magnitude of the point. Finally, make the point iterable that should generate x and y components. So here I'll suggest to pause the video, do your solution and then watch the solution and the next task. So assuming that you have done your solution, let's have a look at my version of the solution. Here is the point class we created in task 1 and 2 in lesson number 5. I'll change the show point method to dunder r so that I can directly print the point object. Moreover, I'll also add getter and setter for x and y coordinates to make sure that both are numbers and not any other data type. Numbers can be integers or floats, so I'll have to check it for both of those. But a better solution is to check if x is of real data type, and that will cover both int and float. To use real, we have to import it from numbers module. If not a real number, we can raise the type error exception. I'll do the same for y coordinate. Let's test it in main program by creating a valid point first and then change the x coordinate to a string and this will generate the error that x coordinate must be a number. Likewise we can test it by changing the y coordinate to a string and it will also generate the error. Now let's add dunder absolute method for point and set it to the magnitude of the point. We do not need mag attribute now. Let's test it in main program on p1 and then recheck on p1 after resetting it so that it is moved to 00. You will see that it prints correct updated magnitude of the point before and after reset. Now let's add the negative operator for point by creating dunder neg method. A new point will be returned by taking the negative of both x and y attributes. In main program, let's take the negative of p1 and the result is minus 4 minus 5 which is correct. 
Now let's add the plus operator support by adding dunder add method. The result will be a new point object with x and y attributes as sum of x y attributes of self and other. Let's check it on p1 and p2 as in place format as p1 plus equal to p2. And the output is correct 57 which is sum of p1 and p2. In similar way we can add under sub method and xy attributes of self and other will be subtracted this time. By the way there can be another way to define this sub method by using negative operator on other and adding the result to self. Let's check it on p1 and p2. and the result is 3 3 which is correct for p1 minus p2. Now let's add dunder mul for multiplication very much like we did in last lesson. But here we need to have it between two points in addition to just between point and a number. Therefore I am using other as second input argument and I will first check if other is a number. And in that case, a new point will be returned with scaled x and y coordinates. We should define reflection method rmul equal to mul as we did in last lesson. Now if the other operand is a point object, we will return the dot product of self and other. Let's test it on p1 and p2 first. And the result should be the dot product which is correct 14 as 4 into 1 plus 5 into 2 is 14. Now let's test it between point and a number using in place format. The result is a point a10 which is 2 times p1. Let's do it in flipped order of number and point and the result is correct as 2 times of 2 times of p1 which is 1620. Now to define the support for dvn, we'll add dunder true dvn method and will be between a point and a number. We can use multiplication operator and multiply self with 1 over number. Let's test it in main program as p1 divided by 2 and the result is correct. Now we'll add rich comparison support between two point objects. We'll start with dunder equal to method for equality. And now let's add under LT for less than operator. For the other comparison operators, we'll simply decorate the class with total ordering decorator. Let's test P1 greater than or equal to P2. And the result is true which is correct as p1 magnitude is greater than p2 magnitude. Now let's define dunder iter to make point iterable. We'll yield x and y attributes. We can test it in main program. And the result is correct. 
Now we'll move to the task 4 which is continuation of the previous task and here we need to work in main program. Part H is to create a list of 10 random points having x and y coordinates randomly between minus 5 and 5. Then apply a filter on above list to get only the points whose magnitude is between 2 and 3. Then on that filtered list, multiply each point with 5 and take negative of the resultant. We can also do it by multiplying point with minus 5. Finally generate another list whose values will be dot products of the points of the above list with point 510. Now once again assuming that you have done your solution, let's have a look at my version of the solution. First let's import random to generate random numbers. We'll create a list using list comprehension of point objects having x and y attributes as random integers between minus 5 and 5. and create 10 such points. Let's print the list and you will see 10 points with random x and y attributes. Now let's filter out the points with magnitudes between 2 and 3. Let's call it as ring points, apply filter function and specify the filter rule by a lambda expression as for point P, the absolute value of P is between 2 and 3. Then specify the list L and finally convert the filter object to a list. Let's print the result and you will see that it has those points with magnitudes between 2 and 3. For this case, all points have x and y values as 1 and 2 positive or negative and the magnitude is square root 5 which is in range 2 to 3. Now let's create a new list by multiplying each point of the list ring points with 5. Check the output and this time it is just one point in ring points as minus 2 1 and when multiplied by 5, the other list has minus 10 5. Let's run it one more time. And now ring point list has 3 points. And big ring points are 5 times of those points. Now as last part, we have to take the dot product of each point in list big ring points with a point 510. For that we'll create the point 510 as p1. And then create a new list with simple list comprehension by multiplying each point P of big ring points with P1. Let's check the result and please verify that there are 3 points in ring point list and so as in big ring points list. And the last list is correct dot products of points of big ring points list with point 510. That's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.